Hi Fox, how are you doing? The clash of the superstars at the world champion. I mean, at the sorry, what I was what I was thinking about. At the Zurich uh, chess challenge is over. At at least the first one. Uh, Magnus Carlsen versus Levon Aronian is finally a draw. And although well, the peaceful uh, result was agreed after the move number forty. Certainly, there were some interesting points in the game. I mean, there were no fireworks or something, but the game was tense with lots of possibility for both. So it was a uh, quite interesting game, not bad. So let's take a look. C4, uh, Magnus Carlsen has white, by the way. Levon Aronian was black. Knight f6, knight c3, e5, and we have a standard uh, four knights English opening. Pretty, pretty standard stuff. G3, D5, this is the re reversed Sicilian, reversed dragon, whatever you want to call it, knight takes, bishop G2 and knight B6, this is very very well known theory, no need to comment on this, I guess, short castle, bishop E7, A3, this is pretty much white's plan to play A3, B4, bishop B2, D3 and try to have some pressure, either in the queen side or in the center, whatever, quite a flexible opening for both players, short castle and now D3, of course, b4 right away is always very popular. And here Aronian chooses a plan which is slightly different from the most common known, the one I knew at least. He plays rook e8 to play bishop f8 to control the e file with the knight. I mean, with the rook. Uh, the plan I was most used to be uh, seeing was the one with bishop e6. Then to play f6, for instance, say b4, f6, now bishop b2, and well, you're playing uh, knight d4, a5, typical moves in this kind of position, but not, uh, I hadn't seen this, this move order for black, playing rook e8 to play bishop f8. Now b4 and bishop f8 is played, and now the, the rook is playing on the e file, interesting as well. Magnus here plays uh, rook b1 keeping flexibility, I mean this rook, this bishop probably will go to b3 but depending on the circumstances it could go uh, to e3 as well so I mean quite flexible and just not uh, rushing at all good approach a5 here, a very typical move for black in these positions not to get smashed on the queen side to try to have something there to try to activate the rook on, on a8 very interesting move and very typical in these lines and b5 this is the more or less compulsory move otherwise I mean taking on a5 doesn't make that much sense now rook takes and black has active pieces on the queen side the pawn on a3 is kind of weak so this gets uh, this gives black too much activity he white shouldn't allow this so b5 just winning some space there and making the knight move and the knight certainly is going to go to uh, d4 here well uh, e3 was played by Magnus certainly a playable move theoretical lots of games here it seems to be ma more popular to play knight d2 with some possible plans I mean you're f giving freedom to the bishop the knight could go either d4 c4 and well now a4 normally is played and bishop b2 with somehow a complex position with both players having to define their plans clearly I mean almost every piece and pawn is still on the board and this is a still complex and not easy position but e3 certainly always playable to ask that knight what it's going to do Aronian takes on f3 and it seems each and every game in this line black is taking but what about knight f5? I mean, I know that knight doesn't seem uh, to be the best piece in the world there. It can't jump to that many places. But still, black is keeping uh, pieces on the board. I mean, there are no games in my database with this move, but it might be playable, I think. Mm, if I, it could go, for instance, bishop b2, it could, go, 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 could go back to d6, having some possibilities to try to play for e4 with the pawn, trying attacking a little on b5, I don't know, maybe, maybe a possibility to, to explore, to improve or to try to try it, just to uh, defer. Knight f f3 it seems to be the only move in this line and everybody plays this, so it must be good. 
bishop takes and a4. Now if black lets white play a4, he will kind of consolidate his uh, space and advantage on the queen side, where black is supposed to have a more advantage because he has 3 against 2, he has the pawn majority there. So a4 gra grabs some space for black and it gives, for instance, black this p3 square. Uh, if the knight, for instance, can jump there, it would be cool for black, etc. Now this this is having a kind of couple of advantages for, for black, a couple of nice points so this is an important move to play almost always in this kind of moves in this kind of uh, lines here uh, queen e2 was played developing the piece to connect the rook somehow and we'll see just i mean not clear of what where is white trying to go to to play yet in the center on the queen side king side so this is still very flexible and rook a7 at the first sight, rook a7 may be like a very strong, uh, not not a very strong, a very strange move, bizarre move. But its point is more or less uh, simple, it wants to keep an eye on the b7 pawn, protect it so that the bishop on c8 is free uh, to move, to be developed. Now bishop b2 and the bishop effectively, it goes to e6. Rook fc1, bringing the rook to an open file and well, neither player, I mean here, has serious weaknesses, threats. This is pretty equal, I think. The computer uh, thinks that as well. But of course, a lot to be played. All piece, of, almost every piece on the board. So no, no reason to to go for a grandmaster draw here. Fast. So this is uh, this is still a very playable position. Lots of plans could arise for both player here. Queen d7 is played, well seems logical, like trying to control light squares here, maybe in those diagonal, attacking uh, b5, um, giving the possibility to double rooks or for whatever. There was another possibility here, seems more aggressive, at least it seems so, f5, black it seems can uh, allow himself to play this kind of moves, can afford it so far, and well, I mean, lots of possibilities here I would go terribly badly in this uh, position with both colors probably but uh, the engine says this is equal but well this might be equal for him but it's, it seems a little bit sharp lots of things could happen in the center computer says e4 is the move here I guess allowing e4 from from black can't be uh, good because you, you might get smashed there maybe I don't know so e4 and f4 here now what if white takes, I mean black takes, well it seems knight takes e4 and now both players have a weak pawn, one on d3, the other one on e5, but I'm not sure what is the plan to improve for neither player here, I mean this is a tense position, possibilities for both, but which is ex exactly the plan to attack the weak pawn of the opponents or to improve your pieces, <clears throat> well interesting, otherwise f4 is suggested after this G takes, E takes, and the engine once again says, says this is very equal, but I mean, can can this be equal? Uh, white has a passed pawn on, on the center, protected passed pawn. This bishop on the diagonal, <coughs> sorry, is potentially very strong, but that, on the other hand, mm, his king side is almost destroyed, so black has black could have activity or counterplay, attack, whatever. I mean, this seems uh, quite sharp to me, and well, uh, an interesting position would be interesting if the player had reached this, it's a pity they didn't. Queen d7 was played, so now knight d4. I don't know, knight could have some possibilities to go to g5, maybe, to try to get the bishop pair. Apart from that, the, the bishop now is free to play on b2, it's attacking the pawn on e5. And here, uh, it seems a very interesting and very correct move, very precise play by Aronia, bishop a2. Now let us see what was happened or to play. I mean, the idea of bishop a2 is to play after rook a1 to play bishop d5. So let us take a look what would happen if black had played bishop d5 at first. So if bishop d5, the idea is that white can play knight c5. And if bishop takes f3, attacking the queen as well, queen takes. Now the queen goes to d6. Knight takes on b7, uh, doesn't seem to be that great. 
Now queen takes d3, black takes his own pawn. And if the knight tries to go back, bishop takes. Now the move is queen c6, attacking both the rook and the bishop. Interesting. Of course, you can't take on c5 so far because the rook on b1 is hanging. So queen c6, knight d7, protecting, and uh, white still cannot take. I mean, uh, with either uh, piece, it is protected on c5, the bishop on c5 protected by the knight, and if he takes with the rook, for instance, the rook is on b1 is hanging once again, so the move is rook d1, x-raying uh, the knight on d7, and after queen f5, queen takes d7, it seems this is pretty much equal, but interesting uh, combinations there, interesting sequences. And instead of queen a2, uh, bishop a2, there was another possibility, the first move I thought about at the first side, I mean, why not f6? You're consolidating here on the center, uh, protecting e5, and doesn't seem the this diagonal is uh, to my very weak. Well, the point is that once again, uh, white is playing knight c5, attacking lots of points there. Black must take, take, and now white has a clear target on c7. This backward pawn on c7 is a target, is a clear weakness for black, so. Uh, white is certainly having lots of initiative here, it seems this is worse for black, but this is the move I was thinking about on the first side. But there it goes, uh, of course, Levon Aronian, thanks God, he's much better than me, he plays this bishop a2, very precise, and after rook a1, he goes bishop d5. Here Magnus thought for a while, he played bishop d4, very interesting, let us take a look for the last time what would happen if he pa had he played now knight c5, the point is that now after bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, black has this uh, extra chance of taking on b5. Now you're attacking lots of things, you're attacking the knight on uh, c5, the bishop on b2, I mean white cannot take on b7, the bishop on b2 is hanging, so this seems to be a much better version for black, much um, bigger improvement. So bishop g4 was played here. And this is kind of the critical um, moment of the game, it seems that uh, it seems Aronian took a while here for, to think because he has a couple of options here, and lots of calculation needs to be played, needs to be done here. And finally, he played queen d8, which uh, Injin thinks is the most accurate move. Uh, he probably is right. Let's take a, let's take a look at the alternatives. He had a couple of decent alternatives. It seems the first one, well, uh, the b5 pawn is hanging. So what happens if Black takes? So now would Rook takes c7 would follow, and bishop c6. Now, I mean, you have speculating, you are speculating with some ideas, if possibly, to put the bishop on d6 and trapping. The rook is kind of disconnected from the rest of the game, but uh, white has some resources and probably some kingside attack. Now, note that only this bishop seems to be protecting this kingside, but white could have potential attack there with the bishop, the knight, uh, and the queen. So, bishop f5 is threatened here with some ideas. And for instance, uh, here bishop takes e4 is suggested just to swap that bishop because it seems white potential attack is quite dangerous. And uh, bishop takes e4, and well, white is doing better here. He has pressure, he has bishop pair. Uh, he has pressure, sorry, he has bishop pair, so his position must be preferable. Otherwise, just take a look at this. I mean, bishop d6 isn't valid, not only for the fact that the knight uh, will take it just to the spot. But uh, it is even stronger here, funny enough, to take on h7 with check. And after king uh, f8, you take on d6. Otherwise, king takes h7 is leading to checkmate. Queen h5 check, king g8, and now queen takes on f7, protected by the rook. That rook which uh, looked a little bit isolated and lost here, well, now it's helping white to checkmate, black. So interesting. Uh, another possibility after bishop g4, other than queen d8, was to play f5. But uh, this was a, a little bit uh, of a mess, at least of at least for me. Bishop h3, and now suggested rook a5, attacking b5 and knight g5, bishop d6, and I'm not sure at all what is uh, neither side's plan. I mean, who is better, who is worse? Uh, not sure how to coordinate pieces, how to launch an attack, how to defend. Not sure what is doing every play, each player here. But this was another opportunity, uh, another alternative. It seems. But queen d8 certainly a good move. Now bishop c3. Its idea is 
seems all its only idea is to prevent rook a5 move, which would be uh, good for black, attacking the pawn on before, before b5, which it seems is finally a weakness. Now knight d7, probably trying to go to either c5, f6, improve that knight's position. That knight is not doing that much job on b6. And bishop f3 here. And, well, interesting enough, well, I must say, mm, very funny, and in the press conference, uh, Levon Aronian uh, said, well, uh, did you comment on this cheap old freak uh, of uh, Carlsen? I mean, what if f5? And the point is that, well, there is a sequence here, knight d6, you're attacking the rook, you're attacking the bishop, the correct move would be here to take on d6, bishop takes, and well, white probably slightly better. But the cheap old trick Aronian was meaning, and they all started to laugh, which was kind of fine, uh, funny, because the point is that after bishop takes f3, white is winning on the spot with this beautiful queen a2 check, and this is leading to checkmate. In fact, king h8, well, you can put pieces in the, in the middle of the check, but white will take them easily, and this is a nice checkmate, so Magnus said, well, not a it's not a cheapo, it's a it was a very beautiful trick, and obviously both of them were were laughing, were in a very good mood. So, and nothing, uh, nothing. I mean, nothing badly intended there. Just a funny comment of both of them. Nice. So, bishop f3 was played here. Instead, I mean, queen b2 was suggested by the engine to be a little bit better with some threats on the big diagonal, maybe with b6, but. I mean, after b6, Carlson wasn't sure about this move, even though com computer says it's a little bit better. So he played bishop f3. He said also, well, about uh, apart from having that uh, cheap old trick was, uh, in which Aronian wasn't going to fall, uh, obviously, he was trying to defend his light squares on the king side to to avoid any problems there. Now b6 uh, was played to avoid this pawn from advancing, even though it it's still, it. I mean, uh, you're going to have this... Uh, weakness on, on c7 forever but it seems this is good because you don't have the target on b7 white doesn't have this target on b7 seems to be a good move really a positional strong move it seems to be that's why all these players understand uh, that that much about chess alternatives well knight c5 i was thinking about if you brought the knight there you might have the idea of and in my opinion the black is doing fine here knight takes bishop takes queen takes bishop takes c5 Black is doing fine here, I think. Not bad. The other alternative was probably to play f5 once again. But as we saw, the cheapo trick is, is there. And of course, as we saw, you, you can take it. Bishop takes d6 is more correct. And after this, well, probably white is slightly better, but mm, probably not that great. Not that much. I mean, this should be holdable still. But b6 was played. And now bishop b4. And well, Maybe objectively looking, um, speaking, if you're looking at the engine all during all the game, you may say, "Hey, this is not a good move. This is already a bad move, etc., etc." But uh, not easy to suggest a, a great move here for White. I mean, what do you do? His position isn't bad, but it isn't that great either. You don't have a clear plan, in my humble point of view. So, Bishop B4. Now Bishop takes A takes. Now white has a couple of doubled pawns here, he has a target on c7, c7 is weak clearly, but black has a passed pawn on a4, so more or less unbalanced position on the queen side, though at this level of play they, they will clearly control all these imbalances. Queen e7 was played here, attacking the, the pawn, activating the queen, and here well it, it was tempting to push the pawn a3, but in the commenting, uh, I mean, in the live stream, uh, Leko was commenting there, Peter Leko, uh, Hungarian GM, and he pointed out that after rook c3, a2, now rook c2, white plan is to play uh, knight c3, exchange this uh, bishop and take the pawn on a2. Well, that's more or less true, but black has his own resources. Say, uh, black is like an uh, engine is suggesting for black to play knight f8. Now the, ru the, uh, the queen is importantly uh, placed on the d file. That's why, uh, because uh, after knight c3, you take on f3 and hooray, you're going to take a2. But black is taking his own pawn on d3, so queen takes d3. First queen e2. Otherwise, you're losing material. The rook and the bishop are uh, the rook and the knight under attack. Queen a2. 
enough to the exchange yes uh, rook d8 you're winning the pawn on a2 but black has taken one on d3 so this must be more or less equal as at least uh, for black i mean he doesn't have he has his weakness on c7 but these two pawns of uh, doubled pawns of white doesn't look impressive at all so queen e7 soon seems a very reasonable move now knight c3 bishop takes queen takes knight f6 and well at this point you could see Carlson was realizing he had no real chance, I mean serious chance of getting an advantage here and it was pretty clear he wasn't satisfied with his game. Uh, once again as I state, as I noted during the World Championship match his uh, his uh, jests, his, you can pretty much always say if he's happy or not with his game and today he wasn't that much happy, he didn't have lots of chances to have an advantage so this is clearly going for a draw. Rook takes a4, Rook takes bishop uh, knight takes, and of, although white is up a pawn, black is going to recover it immediately. Queen takes b4, knight c3, queen b2, attacking the knight, the rook, and queen d1. Pretty much forced moves here, rook d8, and well, I mean, white is suddenly quite passive, but solid. You, It's really not easy, hard to believe anyone can make a serious attempt to win this game. I mean, both players uh, would pr probably knew this. Black is probably slightly better, but not that much. He's more active, but, but white is standing solidly. So uh, Carlson just plays king g2, h6, h3, and saying, hey, show, show me the win. How are you going to improve this? Aronia th thought here for a while, but finally he settled with the draw. He went for a simplification, which is leading, in fact, for a nice draw. He played rook takes d3 which is forcing the draw, nice combination here. Queen takes d3 and it seems white black is winning material. Queen takes. After queen d8, king h7, the correct move is to take on c7. And now knight e4, attacking the knight on c3, which is pinned, so obviously you can take. But the point is that black is taking on e5. I mean white is taking on e5, sorry. And now black takes on c3, he's up up uh, a knight for a pawn, but the point is that white has a a perpetual check, lots of checks there, queen f5 check, king g8, and after a couple of checks they agreed to draw on the move 4t, after reaching the move 4t, uh, well it is pretty clear that the um, game was a draw here at this point, but a shame for um, for the players, obviously saying with some some kind of bad humor because uh, they they made it to the 14th move hadn't they uh, played until the 14th move they would have to play another rapid game uh, which wouldn't count for the standings obviously but just for the sake of fun but oh, they obviously were a little bit lazy today they didn't want to do it so they reached the move 40 to settle for the draw and there it goes an interesting battle with these two giants of chess a draw so far let us see what the rest of the tournament has for us and thanks for watching.